right, Calabunga. This emoji. Do you guys work. know who Louis uh, J. Gomez is? Uh, no, who's Louis J. Gomez? I, I've seen that. You... I've seen that name pop up a lot, but I, I have I have no idea who the fuck that dude is. So he's uh he's a Joe Rogan circle guy. Like I don't know how you say it, but there's like those circle of comedians that Joe Rogan just filters. And some of them are really fucking terrible. Like, you got, like, Brandon Schaub, who's so punch drunk, he can't even tell a joke. But oh God. Louis J. Gomez is one of the good ones. And he asked a question uh, on Twitter the other day. He said, what is Discord? And the best way I could come up with it is that, uh, no, the question was, does Discord work? And my best response to that is it doesn't really no. work, but it doesn't <laughs> really work, but it's better than Skype. Oh, fucking way better than fucking Skype. It's, it's Actually, too... I've had a good experience with Skype. Skype. Last couple times I tried to use Skype for a podcast, it didn't go very well. But most recently I started a show with one of my IRL friends and we do it through Skype and it's actually been working quite well. It's uh, it's better to do it by phone. I know one of the biggest blunders I had was, um, you know, you guys know Jesse Lee Peterson, right? Cause yeah, yeah, you yeah. Both listen to the Kill Screen. I, uh, I, I call yeah, Beta. I called him to his show, and I finally made it on. Oh no, he, shit. He uh, he said my name. He said my real life name. He's like, we got. CJ from Detroit, and then as soon as I was about to go on, uh, the call drops, and I try to get back in, and his producer, it's still the fucking best rejection I've ever gotten from anybody, but his producer said, you have an Obama phone, you need to get a new phone. <laughs> oh my God. Damn. I, uh, Obama I love phone. that story. He oh, just shit. said, I have an Obama phone. It sounds like you have an Obama phone. Like, what? womp, womp, now, womp. Now, Mo. Yeah. Imagine you have somebody who you look up to, right? They're like one of your one of your personal heroes. Uh-huh. And you've always dreamed of, like, actually talking to this person. Like, having them reach out to you personally and, like, through DMs or otherwise. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now, as you know, one of my personal heroes is Dick Masterson, host of The Dick Show. Oh, thank God, because I thought for a second you were about to tell me how you're getting diddled by some dude. I was like, buddy, I can no, stop recording no. right now. We can Gross. have a therapy session. Gross. Um, no. <laughs> I was five years old when Joe Biden said he just wanted <laughs> to give me a hug. And then he just kept sniffing me and sniffing hug. me. <laughs> he told me to play with his leg hair. It was really weird. I don't understand it. <laughs> anyway, sorry, but anyway, go ahead. Yeah, I am. I am somewhat well known for being in the other side of the fence. You know, running around with classic Dick Show detractors whom people do not like, such as Cameron Clark. I, I've never heard of him. You never heard of Cameron Clark. No, who, who haven't you it? been on the Cameron Clark show before? I, I, well, he's I, he's I joking. Was, <laughs> yeah, it was a joke, but but um, yeah, I know of Cameron Clark. Unfortunately, he unfortunately, spent, he, yeah, he spends his time commenting under all my tweets, and I think about I hate giving him credit, but I do have to admit he puts his time in the most worthless thing you can put your time towards. <laughs> if, I been, if he was like like an engineer or something, he would probably have solved cancer by now because if he did <laughs> if he did shit other than just leave comments under people he doesn't like and his butt mad If he over, could target cancer as well as he targets Dick Masters. <laughs> yeah, he, he would totally yeah. be like the guy that cures cancer, but that's the weirdest thing about Cameron Clark to me. I think. 
I, I like the guy All personally. Right, He's oh, sorry. Let me just finish this. I like the guy no, personally. I like the guy personally because he's always been like real nice to me and and all mm -hmm. that stuff and like he, the Cameron Clark show was pretty good for a while but I think it sort of fell off the face of the planet because I haven't heard. Well, you know what happened? Because he's been uh, doing the Dick Smith podcast. Tim, I hate to interrupt on this show all the time. I probably will because yeah, ain't no ain't no thing. Don't worry about it. But me and Kevin Clark were cool for a while and then. I got to do a show with the other Riley for a little bit from uh, the producer of the Dick Show, that Riley. Yeah. And because... Uh, Riley spelt correctly. Right. Because Riley is tight with Dick, that caused Cameron Clark to target me as a troll, I, I guess. And the best way to explain it. Yeah, but since I'm running around with those guys and doing their dumb drama podcast, like, I never actually get into the weeds of saying bad shit about Dick, but, you know, I'll sing a dumb song, I'll just go on the show and talk about, like, Steven Universe or whatever the fuck. So I'm on those shows, I'm running around with those people, and then the, what, what this causes is the first message ever sent to me by one of my personal heroes, Dick Masterson, he DMs me on Twitter, the first thing he ever says to me, why are you always getting roped into these retards nonsense? <laughs> <laughs> That's a fair question. Yeah, that is a fair <laughs> question. Could you elaborate a little bit more? I mean, I responded, I really don't know. I'm going to try to avoid it in the future, which I am. <laughs> yeah, I love how he gave you your uh, your new uh, your your Twitter name, Riley Snake in the Grass, or... Snake in the Grass yeah, Riley or whatever was it was. Yeah, that was Dick during one of his fucking piano streams. Because he called me that in a streams. Twitch stream. That's so goddamn yeah. funny. All right, all right. Yeah, but, um... Oh, I was going somewhere with the Discord, but I forgot what it was. <laughs> this is what happens when you don't smoke before a podcast. <laughs> oh, dude, I, I've been, like, uh, trying to maintain sobriety during, like, before the podcast starts. Because, <clears throat> like, you could eat, like, and, and Robin busted my balls big time, the uh, like, a couple of weeks ago uh, on it. Because, like... I'll, I'll talk to somebody and then I'll be like, um, uh, fuck, what, what were we talking about? And I'm like, Riley, um, wh what? And like, I, I've noticed that I've been doing that a lot lately. And I've been watching a lot of Dark Side Phil, right? And like, what I'm trying to oh, do, no. what I'm trying to do is become like a better person and not end up like DSP. Where, like, I don't have the fame, but I have the failure aspect of it. Because so far, I've yet to achieve fame or financial success. Ouch. You all right, bud? Nah, he's okay. So, anyway, yeah, uh, fucking... So, like, I've been trying to just, like, drink nothing but water and, and you know, just, like, hit the vape a few times. Not, like, fucking smoke out or anything. Because I, I just, uh, I don't want to go, uh... Well, yeah, because, like, I've had nightmares about, like, uh, like having a good conversation with somebody, and then I space out because I'm baked. And I'm like, man, you know what would be great right now? Some fucking, like, some, some nice macaroni and cheese with some bacon bits and stuff. And they're like, well, you know. Mo, you call that a nightmare. I think that's, like, a good dream because I hardly ever want to talk to people and 90 percent of what people say isn't interesting so maybe if i just blank out and think about mac and cheese that's a good that's not a positive thing for you well no see i i, I love it it's just that it always just destroys the fucking conversation that i'm at uh, the, uh, that i'm into because like they're trying to talk to me and i'm trying to be like you know, nice and polite and understand and listen to what they're fucking saying. But then here I am going, you know, I like some mac and cheese right now because I'm fucking stoned. And then I fuck well, up the entire well, conversation. Gotta, I'll tell this for the tip of all the listeners that are listening to the show right now. You have to make yourself <laughs> a social protected class in some way. 
so you can be a dick in public on purpose and you won't get called out on it. What so if I you st- can, Oh, go ahead. Yo, you could like put on like a hijab or some shoe polish maybe or get in, get in a wheelchair and just because you're a protected class, because you identify as such and such, you can pretty much be an asshole in public and get away with it. Oh, in man. I, I, imagine if I slapped my fucking fat ass into a fucking wheelchair, right? And I actually got away with that shit. <laughs> and, and, like, imagine, like, no one calling me out on it. It's like, you know, I could have sworn that I saw that guy get up to go to the bathroom just a few minutes ago. He said he had, like, the, the FDR disease. And I don't think he does. Well, I, I've never heard of cripple, cripple stolen Bauer yet, but if that if that's the thing, I'm new to it. And uh, you have my permission, by the way, Molly. You can go out and buy a wheelchair right now and just pretend all day long. No shit. All right, I'll remember that. I'll remember that. All right, let's go. I, no, go ahead. Handicap. I, I was gonna say handicap spaces are basically useless now because they. Give them to fat bitches that don't want to walk a little bit. They oh my used god! To mean something, but oh yeah, yeah, dude. I actually seen that the other day. I I cu- I saw a couple of fatties fucking pop out of their giant freaking Volvo monstrosity freaking SUV, right? And they, they, like you can always tell like someone's a piece of shit that you, like you're talking you're you're seeing a piece of shit because like they'll park in the handicapped spot, bam, put up the little like handicapped lanyard. And uh, they'll get out, and they're just fat as shit. And, you know, they're going to get on those little rascal scooters because you're at a Walmart. You got to pick up your mom and dad's prescription or something. You got to do something at that fucking place. And you just don't have a fucking way of, like, you know, what are you going to do? Call them out? Like, these people, if they sit on you, you're dead. Like, that's well, the end I'm of your life. I'm not knocking them. I'm not knocking them either. If you can fuck the system over in any way to your advantage. I would encourage that 100%, but for the real people like me that are actually crippled, there's no way to tell a difference between them and just some fat bitch who can't stop eating Twinkies. Oh, man, wouldn't it be great to have, like, what you and your crippled friends and stuff, like, you just, you go around, like, parking lots and stuff, and you just patrol them for a few hours, and then when you see a bunch of fatties or someone who doesn't even have a fucking limp, uh... Uh, fucking parking one of these things, you, you just fucking roll up on them, and you just fucking blow your freaking air horn. The ha, and no, you're just that's like, <laughs> a great idea. I'm gonna I'm gonna DM Ricky Berwick right now, and we'll get on it. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> all right, all right, all right Ricky, let's... You should get Ricky Bur- Berwick on Holy Rollers. He'd be a good guest. Oh, I, I, uh, I'm gonna reach out to Crip Daddy soon. I think he was a guest on <laughs> Triple Cast. Yeah, a, I love talking to him. He's an awesome guy. But uh, Cripple Cast went nowhere. Be- I'm not ashamed to admit it either. Cripple Cast went nowhere because the audio was terrible. But I actually have a mic set up this time around, so I think I could pull my weight this time. I thought the Cripple Cast was pretty good. I was sad I didn't work through the whole backlog before it got taken down. Oh, it got taken Bro, down, man? It was definitely... I didn't know it got taken down, did it? Yeah. Oh, shit. The feed it's is gone. Still on, it's still on my iPad feed to this day. Maybe there's some goss I don't know about. but. Oh, shit. Okay. Let me wow. go ahead. Let me go ahead and do the intro real quick because we're like 15 minutes into this freaking. <laughs> and I have not this been able to. Long. Yeah, it's like this is the longest mocast intro I think I've ever had. That means we're doing good. That means yeah. we're doing good. We're, yeah, we're that means we're doing real. That... Intro in. All right. Yeah. Well, speaking of intros, what's up, everybody? Welcome to the mocast. I'm your host, Mo Diggity. Uh, Robin, unfortunately, can't be with us today because of work conflicts and other bullshit. So, in her place, we have the one, the only, one of my favorite guests, uh, Cripple Jesus. Say what's up, dude. What's going on, everybody? And, of course, our other co-host, the one, the only, Riley, which who had who had a really good, successful freaking Pokemon uh, 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 Twitch stream just a little while ago before the show. 
yeah, I had some pretty good view counts. Maybe that'll boost up my average viewers. I can actually get fucking affiliate. For I, I'm already at the followers, the required days, the hours. I just need the average viewers. Oh, you should hawk your freaking your your uh, Twitch stream more because I'll gladly help you out with getting affiliation. You know, getting affiliate status. Uh, that way, you know, uh, you're getting all those sweet, sweet little Twitch Prime subs. You can finally get bits and shit. Like, yeah, definitely. And I actually enjoyed your Twitch stream uh, 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 today. I watched some of it. I'm not much for Pokemon, but I told a lot of my friends in the other discords that I gone to. They they were like, he's doing that. What? Cool, because you basically were playing a hardcore Pokemon. Yeah, Pokemon Nuzlocke, which is where you can only catch the first Pokemon you find in each route, and if something dies, it's dead forever. You gotta put it away and never use it now, again. Right, now, right. Riley, I know you're a fan of Pokemon, but have you ever Pokemon? tried Vagina? <laughs> <laughs> Unfortunately, no, I haven't tried that. I will. <laughs> Maybe, maybe you want to go to your local gentleman establishment. Maybe you kept a nice lady. Just give it a try, man. Tell me how you sounds, feel. Sounds like I should give it a shot. Thanks for the recommendation, CJ. It's like, because once you catch one, you got to catch them all. <laughs> it's like, it's it's what, better. STDs? Oh, well, I was going to say vag, but, you know, like, yeah, sure, STDs, if you want to go that route. I mean, you know. A lot of people do. I mean, this entire week has been like a bunch of people screaming at freaking Dick Masterson for, uh, uh, I don't even know what. Like, it's it's literally a bunch of bitter virgins this week. Oh, that they, was, come that out was with stupid. Jamie Tech. The, that know, was the funniest. I think that was the funniest blunder of the week. It's just so hard for me to imagine that there's actually a group of people out there who believe that crushing pussy is an offense to get you canceled over. Oh, totally, oh, because yeah. they they have no idea how to talk to freaking women, man. I mean, dude, the, uh, like, a dick's freaking text, th that ain't shit, man. I I've seen more sappier texts from, like, more uh, uh, alpha Chad tard freaking friends of mine. Like, dude, it's, it's just all about the game, right? And these these dudes... They, they they don't they they stay inside all the time. They don't do shit. And this is before the quarantine. Was there? They they just don't fucking know how the game's played, man. They called. I think Jesse calls the quarantine a Tuesday. Uh, <clears throat> if I had to guess, it's a normal day for him. Oh, pretty much at this point, yeah. It's just driving me fucking insane. Like, I, yeah, I, I'd um... rather I'd rather be like literally doing anything else right now and i'll tell you why because uh last saturday so i i went i went ahead and just said fuck it went out and went, i went out to uh, wa uh wander around the irradiated wasteland that is the covid19 apocalypse right and mm -hmm. it turns out not really anyone's doing like much apocalyptic there's there's no like you know heads on spikes anywhere uh there's no abandoned all hope ye who enter here signs anywhere it's it's literally normal except everything's a, a lot of things are closed, right? And uh, it pisses yeah. me off because this is, I think this is what's going to cause a freaking recession or depression or something because like everything's fucking fine, nobody gives a shit, nobody cares. There's like maybe a third of the people I saw in the Sam's warehouse that I was at. Uh, wearing their stupid fucking COVID masks. And, uh, and other than that, everyone's just like, dude, we need to get back to fucking work, man. I want to go back to my job. My bills are piling up. Uh, Trump buck so far has just been, I, I think that's just going to be the one time only thing right now until they approve another stimulus package. Well, and I haven't gotten my Trump bucks yet, but I've heard that oh, they're man. pushing it out to July, so... Well, shit, man, I, I really hope that you get yours because my brother was talking about how uh, he tried to cash his paper check, right? And he went to like a couple, he went to a Walmart and HEB and they both told him the same thing. Uh, is insufficient funds to cash this check. Whereas I just fucking said, hey, here's my direct bank account link, just deposit it in there. And I, I got my 1200 bucks. But yeah, man, that's well. Uh, it's not like I can do much with it anyway. The poker rooms are closed; nothing's open. 
So, I mean, you here in Michigan, you can buy weed from the recreational stops, but that's about it. Man, I mm. wish I could get Trump bucks. Have well, you ever had? You're a, you're a Bernie bro, aren't you? I thought I saw. I mean, that in your I was, but point. then he dropped out. So. You haven't had to file taxes or have like a summer job or anything, buddy. Nope. Ah, oh, bummer, bummer. Well, I um. Maybe you'll get the next round or something. You know. I have a take on this. Where are you at, Mo? Like oh. where uh, you're in Texas, right? Yeah, yeah. I'm actually a uh, straight smack dab on the Gulf Coast. So is um, is your state open? Like, what are the laws like? Well, we're pretty much like well, Governor Abbott pretty much opened the state back up. Uh, we're just waiting for uh, like the the total open. What the fuck was that? Was that you, Riley? That was me clapping. For oh, okay. The oh, okay. Okay. Yeah, we're we're essentially open, but we're waiting for uh, the official order to come down and say, "Hey, everything can open, go back to your normal fucking lives," because our freaking governor isn't completely fucking retarded, uh, like fucking uh, your governor, CJ, and that fucking sucks. Oh that, yeah, I yeah, was yeah, I, get into that. Uh, yeah, that, you that, located, that it, CJ. I um I think that. The corona, it's. I think it's probably dead by now, and I think they're pushing the lockdown. And here's why: I think they're gonna push the lockdown as close to November as possible, so we all have to vote, uh, in the mail, right? And then when we get to that point where we vote, they're just gonna be like, "Oh, we lost all the Trump votes." Joe Biden is president. Yeah, um, Uncle Touchy is now president, which is essentially, I, it's kind of my take on that, too. It's the only way a Democrat can fucking win is to, by being a piece of shit. And I hope they fucking pay for it, too, man. Well, it's, here's the In thing, Minecraft. Uh, Trump versus Joe Biden, that would be like taking me on in a basketball game, right? Trump is obviously going to win. Yeah, it's Under like Michael Jordan. Yeah, it's like LeBron James or fucking Jordan comes down to you and like, hey, boy, we're going to play some ball. What's up? Hope you have your A game. Uh, yes, I, sir. I, uh, and you get stuck. I, I really think the only way for Joe to win is if they rig it. I think that's because I, despite what you hear out of the media that he has like a hold on like black people because he works for Obama. I don't really think that's true. Like if you actually talk to people, a lot of them think that he's a creepy rapist and he's not if we go to war with somebody, he's not going to remember who we went to war with the next day. So why the fuck would we have him as the president? I well, mean, yeah. It's- yeah, he, he'll pretty much be a fucking puppet, probably for, like, corporate interests or for whoever the— It's pretty much for the deep state at this fucking point. Uh, I mean, know, I, I went to school on a short bus, and there were kids on that bus that are more articulate than he is. So. Oh, oh, dude, I, I bet at least half of them are more qualified to be fucking president. But, yeah, that's—well, uh, Gretchen is obviously— uh, Democrat, which is why I believe she's pushing the shutdown as far as possible. She just extended it to May 28th, like last week. So we'll see what happens. Man, I'm I'm telling you right now, I'm looking at all these protests, and we'll get into the protests in a second and see what you guys think of them. But, uh, dude, it really looks like there's about to be some, like, freaking, no one's afraid of the cops anymore. Everyone's mad. Everyone wants out. And excuse me, <clears throat> man, this uh, uh, this uh, enchilada casserole stuff that we just had. It was it's really really good, but it's making me burp a little bit. I think I'm going to have some gas tonight. <laughs> but uh, anyway, um, you know, I've seen all these protests going on just from this week alone. Uh, everyone's pissed off. Everyone's not afraid of the cops anymore. They want fucking out. They're they're not seeing this so-called devastation that we were told and we are sold on this idea that COVID-19 was going to be this gigantic pandemic. And for a little bit, it was like I, I'm actually on uh, Team Trump 
as far as like the COVID stuff is concerned. Uh, it would be Team Bernie too because Bernie was the only one who seemed to have out of the whole fucking Democratic fucking party that was actually trying to fucking do something, right? Everyone else, Pelosi, piece of shit, fucking did nothing. Uh, fucking uh, uh, Schumer fucking did nothing. Uh, uh, and, and fucking Joe Biden, you know, we didn't hear from him for fucking weeks. And he did absolutely well, they had nothing. To, they had to train his wife what to say all that time. That's why he <laughs> wasn't doing any press statements. Oh, man, but uh, it's... It's it's real sad because I just see I see real rioting going on, and once the uh, once the initial riots start, I think it's going to be total fucking riots all across the freaking board. Uh, you know, imagine imagine you know Iraq. Now imagine America. Now imagine you know Iraq style freaking a uh, uh, social chaos happening here by the way uh rioters if you're listening to this from the future i am <laughs> the, i'm the kid in the wheelchair with the all black with the all black on let's go steal some radios <laughs> dude oh my god I, I can totally see you like you know just stealing a bunch of useless shit for the comedy comedic effect of it oh, all oh yeah man this is gonna be like rodney king riot times two let's oh go. dude you're gonna let's be like go. fucking you're gonna be like frank reynolds from it's always sunny uh was during the fucking la riots you just caught like stealing a bunch of fucking golf clubs <laughs> oh, or some fucking running pants just for the irony and the comedy of it but yeah. oh yeah I, I i need those uh football cleats i got some yard seed up Oh yeah, you know you need some you need some fucking uh, balance. You know you need some grit. But anyway, so and I'm, uh, I'm gonna get one of those uh, exercise bicycles because I I thought about becoming a triathlon athlete. I think that's my new passion. Oh yeah, you gotta work on your backstroke too, because don't you have to swim <laughs> during that stuff? It's it's really it's really time for me to take a stand for what's right, Mo. Oh, damn right, damn right, and I'll stand with you, Mihartis. So, uh, yeah, if I were to listen to the Dick Masterson roast on the kill stream from a month or two ago, and I heard CJ call in and be like, "I'm sorry, I'm tired from the 5K I just ran." <laughs> <laughs> But uh, yeah. So uh, CJ, w- w- what's your takes on everything, man? Do you think I'm just being paranoid? Do you think I'm like uh, on the ball or or what, man? What do you think about all this uh, shit? I'll say right now, I do think that uh, there's gonna be if they extend it one more time, I think that's gonna be the tipping point for a lot of Americans because I'm seeing people that don't give a shit about politics. They're like, come the fuck on, let's open already. So I, I do think there might be some riots at hand. I am, however, pro-riot, and uh, I'll more than likely be joining them if something goes down. So Well, yeah, I, I, something that really bothered me, and I know this is just a, a knock on Americans, right, was, uh, you know, it was this meme that says, uh, Ju- uh, July 4th is uh, right around the corner. I wonder if we get to ask the per- uh, the police permission to celebrate our day of independence and freedom. And, you know, that just made me mad. And I saw some fucking pig taking away, like, some protesters' fucking American flag. And a bunch of them, uh, a bunch of people, a bunch of the protesters fucking surrounded the two cops and said, let them go. And they fucking let them go under public fucking pressure, man. You and... know, at a time like this, it makes me think that Antifa was a paid protest all along. Because well, now, when, now when the government is actually engaging in fascism, those uh, twinks are nowhere to be seen. Oh, fucking so. nowhere, man. And, and almost every single one of them are pro-freaking-lockdown for America. Like, you know, none of them. Like you don't see, you don't really see anything happening. Like I think a couple of weeks ago, I I heard something about a anti-American graffiti was uh, spray painted on I think on a Republican's freaking uh uh, uh like a, a Republican's fucking uh, a building or whatever. It was like a Republican bu- uh, a Republican Party building. There we go. Um, there was some like anti-capitalism shit spray painted on there. But other than that, 
That's all I fucking seen. All of these fucking little mini fascists and Pinochet wannabes, they're fucking nowhere to be found. Uh, you can't, they're, they're, they're all pro lockdown. They don't give a shit. Uh, it, it's like, it, it really is, it almost feels like exactly what you're talking about. Because here's the thing if you ever heard of this group called Black Block, it's sort of an offshoot of these Antifa fuckheads, right? And all of them are fucking cops. <laughs> All of them are fucking cops. You could tell by their freaking boots because they're all freaking police issued freaking right, uh, like uh, they're right police issued boots, right? And they go in there and they go in there specifically to disrupt and destroy the credibility of any of the uh, protests going on. Like the battle for Seattle some time ago, it was a lot of people who were mad and they weren't rioting until the black block types and the Antifa types started showing up and started like, uh, you know, showing capitalism by throwing a freaking uh, trash can through a Starbucks window, you know? Or, you know... Um... Alex Jones, he did. By the way, I have my thing on Alex Jones is he's fucking crazy, right? For sure. But it's weird how a lot of his theories are proven right eventually because he was he jumped the Epstein gun way before any of that was reported on. Oh, big time, big time. He was talking about Jeffrey Epstein in fucking 2012. When all we were worried about was Ebola, and that wasn't even a real big deal. Well, shit, man. But, I mean, there was a lot of uh, male uh, uh, actors like Corey Feldman, uh, Terry Crews. There was a few other ones, uh, I think, that were men uh, who were talking about the, uh, the the literal, actual rape culture. Like, for once, rape culture is not a myth in, in, in this fucking area, right? Uh, they were talking about and everyone told them to shut the fuck up. You know, that they, well, they didn't I care say about Alex anything. Jones because uh, when when um, Iraq happened, Alex Jones went to the Iraq protest and he, at the Pentagon, and he said that there's the government planted these officials to make the protests violent. That way, the cops would come out and be like, "All right, this is harming the people. We can't have any of it." So I think uh, government operatives shutting down protests, that's been a thing for a long time. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it has. In fact, here's another example of that. Remember the Tea Party Express stuff? Uh, when uh, when the Tea Party people had their big protest on the White House lawn, right? They uh, – uh, there was this dude uh, who's uh, – I think his, uh, his shtick – was to make them look a little silly by telling them to, uh, to repeat the phrase, Columbus, go home. And he got a bunch of dum-dums, you know, to, to fucking say Columbus, go home, right? And we're talking about Christopher Columbus, of course, right? So he went to this protest, and he started talking. Or as his better name, uh, Sir, Sir Sheepfucker. <laughs> that's, uh, that's his noble name. Right, right. His his title, his official title, Christopher Sheepfucker Columbus. <laughs> but anyway, he was talking to these people, and he came across these uh, this couple. Right? He goes, "Oh yeah, we uh, we actually uh, we're at this protest to check everything out, and uh, we actually work for the fe- uh, FBI." And suddenly, he sort of just like got spooked, and he fucking bounced. So there's there's fucking federal agents all over the fucking place. Yeah, five one two. Get the fuck out of here, stupid fucking phone. I just got my phone turned on the other day, and I quickly remembered why I've left it off for so long. Is because I can't go without. I can't go forty eight hours with at least like two or three fucking solicitors, uh, calling me, and it just drives me absolutely insane. But yeah, uh, do you have anything else that you you want to finish your thoughts? I kind of just jumped into there with that. No, I, I totally think that this whole corona thing is fabricated. And I'm one of the people that thought that from the beginning. And now I'm getting people that aren't staunch Republicans or they don't have any views at all on politics. And they're saying, you know, you might be right. So, I mean, you, you can, can call me, you can I call me crazy. I think in the, you can call me crazy in the beginning, but. 
like Alex Jones, I'm almost always proven right, eventually. I mean, you can't even blame anyone for feeling that way. I mean, things have gotten, like, we were com- we were fine, uh, like, uh, we, we hated it, but I was fine with being shut down for the most part for the first few weeks because, like, yeah, we were getting a lot of really bad numbers, and we thought that was going to be worse, and our stupid media uh, hyped it up like way too big like that was the first big warning sign i thought was when i started seeing the uh, the media really ramping up the freaking fear factor for all of this it, it, like that because it was it was the exact same way uh exact same thing that they did before the after 911 uh to the lead up to the iraq war and and everything it just got really fucking frustrating well you know twitter was sitting in their pants today because uh Trump denied these uh, statements that the WHO released, and it says that a uh, million people in the states are gonna die. Yeah, fuck the World Health Organization. They, <laughs> it's like, like it's it's like it's bad enough that you were already in the pockets of China, but you're talking to Asian men and you can't even do math correctly. How fuck is that? <laughs> <laughs> We've only had about, not even, we've had about like 60,000 deaths in the state. And yeah, you for real think that it's going to get up to a million? Just fuck off with that yeah, shit. Yeah, th- there's, there was like, what, the last time I checked, there was like near 3 million cases worldwide. And that was like, I think a week and a half ago. Uh, yeah, yeah. But anyway, it's, it's uh. It's crazy, man. Uh, but anyway, Riley, sorry, buddy, we haven't let you talk this entire time. Oh, what do you think about the the, pro- the protests going on? What do you think about, like, what's, I guess, the totality of it all? What are your thoughts? Hell yeah, brother. I love the protests. Love all this shit. I told you from day one, fuck all this lockdown shit. Get rid of it. Open it all. I If there was a protest in my area, which there won't be because I live in bumfuck middle of nowhere, Florida, I'd totally go to it. No shit. I, because I hate all this lockdown shit. I think it's overblown, and I think we should just open back up before the economy crashes. Yeah, I'm I mean to... Vegas opened up, and they're actually doing pretty well. So I'm anybody great. that is still a lockdown bootlicker, still just look at Vegas uh, participating in society again, and it's absolutely fine. Oh, even freaking California is. Uh... They're like, okay, we we we've got to stop this. Uh, we got to stop this lockdown nonsense. I mean, Florida pretty much opened back up, didn't they, Riley? Well, in a limited capacity, I think they reopened beaches, and I think they're starting to reopen like dine-in restaurants, but like you can only have ten people in at once, so it's pretty much you're gonna have to make reservations days in advance. <laughs> Now, where do, where does that put the meth trailer parks? Are those open? <laughs> oh, I'm sure th- those are open year-round, brother. Pandemic yeah. or no pandemic, they're slinging the meth. Great, great. I want them to keep it up because the more Florida man headlines I read, the happier I get. So. <laughs> <Ugh>. Yeah. <clears throat> what a great state I live in. What a nice fucking place. Yeah, you really like... do. You either have you have boomers who are addicted to opioids or you have the younger guys who are just math junkies. It's a it's a wonderful place. And then you got alligators in between all that madness. <laughs> and then you and have then the... got Riley Brooks. <laughs> and then you have all just the people st- that are doing the drug crocodile. And have their shit fucking rotted away. I remember when that was a Florida thing. Oh I'm probably yeah, the only um, Floridian over the age of twelve who hasn't touched drugs or alcohol. Like, hey, well, guys, you're not you you're not from Florida, then, right? I think <laughs> that's the test. I mean, I guess I was born in Massachusetts, but I've been in Florida as long as I was conscious and aware. I moved here when I was like one and a half years old. So anyway, enough about this COVID bullshit. So CJ, uh, I heard you have a new podcast uh, that came out. It's called Holy Rollers, huh? You want to walk us through? So uh, yeah, I'm rebooting. 
I did Holy Rollers with uh, Riley, and a lot of people think that there's ill intent between me and him, and that's not the case at all. Um, it was basically, I was hard to work with because my audio was shit, so yeah, I finally was able to save up and afford an actual good setup, and I uh, I got the go-ahead to reboot Holy Rollers because I liked the idea so much the first time around, and it's been going pretty well. Right, should have just right. gotten me because then it still would have been CJ and Riley. It just would have been a different Riley. <laughs> <laughs> oh my That's god! It, is that some shit? Like, all right, everyone, like here, you are here for the comedy stylings of Cripple Jesus and Riley. Well, <laughs> Riley couldn't make it here today, so wait. Instead, uh, we have Riley. <laughs> yeah. So now here's the get ready for the comedy stylings of Cripple Jesus and Riley. It's like, well, uh, I've, I've been waiting to do my stand up routine, but every time I just try, I collapse. So, <laughs> I don't know. just when you run out of holy rollers, guess there's just an episode that's just you and it's you doing a comedy stand up comedy routine as a sermon. <laughs> See the first, um, but we actually we just interviewed a porn star and it was it was great. How we did you book about... that girl? I heard that. How'd you get her on your show? So my producer, uh, Rich Dickman of the Rich Dickman podcast. Go yeah, y'all. It, yeah, y'all definitely go listen. That's a really good podcast. I just discovered them recently too. Like I wish yeah, I discovered my, them like a year ago. Uh, Rem Dickman is my producer, and uh, he, she's been on the show. He's been on. She's been on his show multiple times so i i used him to get her and then that that was just a great episode we talked about uh the financials of uh porn and i really wanted to know how they shoot porn in the age of corona so uh and you got my a new favorite... porn star named tripod tony <laughs> Oh yeah, yeah, God. Tripod Tony. <laughs> we went over and crippled porn star names. It was great. I'm not going to spoil the whole thing. If you want to go listen to it, we're on a bunch of platforms. It's just easiest to Google Holy Rollers. Yeah, listen to Holy Rollers. It's been really good so far. I yeah. personally recommend it. Definitely, definitely. Links will definitely be in the description for you stuff. Yeah, uh, I remember when you guys, you and Riley, were first starting off the Holy Roller stuff. And there was that huge freaking controversy of, uh, I think it was Cameron Clark going in to record the audio initially. The 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 uh, no. The raw audio. What happened was because there's a lot of I hate talking about Cameron Clark because he's a faggot. <laughs> <and> he, <laughs> I'm sorry, Cameron. I really am. <laughs> He's probably got a heart on right now that somebody is mentioning his name. But um, what happened God. was, is uh, what happened was, is we were recording the show, and we were in that pre-record, like where we fuck around with the audio, and we try to get it set up, and we never did end up getting it set up because I had so much computer problems, and uh. I ordered a pizza during that whole thing. And, uh, you <laughs> like, can actually... fuck my checking. I want Domino's. <laughs> <laughs> you can hear my address being said in that uh, whole thing. And I, we didn't know that Cameron Clark was recording it secretly. So when he uploaded it, my address was in it. And uh, yeah, I guess that's what doxing is. But. Like, didn't he yeah. not do it on purpose though? Like he didn't. He just didn't check the audio before he posted it or something. It's it's hard to tell with him either way. He's still <laughs> a faggot, so it it doesn't really matter to me. But yeah, that's the whole controversy. And then a lot of people were saying that I was blackmailed to go on his show because he had my address, but there really wasn't any blackmail. It was more just like. I went on his show to say, hey, what the fuck, man? Why is my address on your SoundCloud? But Yeah, I mean, you've been on the Cameron Clark show 
like I think a few times, like way before your stuff even started. So I thought, like, when that fucking accusation came about, uh, like it didn't make a damn bit of sense because, like, you guys knew each other, and I don't think you'd, he'd really need to blackmail you at all. Well, there's like there's long information on both sides, basically, is what was going down. But... Yeah. So, uh, what what were the last uh, the the last couple episodes like? Cause, uh, um, dude, I don't know what it is with Twitter, but I have to dig, uh, t- through like a bunch of tweets to get to your stuff. And I just only recently saw the latest episode of Holy Rollers out, and I was really pissed because like it's the fourth one, and that means I've missed the last couple. So like, how so how has episode it been so far? three we had Larry on, we talked about. Uh, basically what we're talking about now, the tyrannical government. And I, I asked him about fatherhood during Corona because I don't have any kids. And that was a real, really neat perspective to get on what it was like to be a dad during this whole lockdown thing. So if you want to listen to that, uh, yeah, go ahead. And then the, second episode I did was with Berries, who was the artist friend of mine. You oh, you mean probably... Berries and Cream? Berries and Cream, yeah. Oh, yeah, she actually did the uh, the background for my uh, YouTube and Twitter uh, channels, man. Yeah, she's oh, super, yeah. super awesome, so we'll get her link in the description too, because she's a really cool artist, very nice to work with and all that she stuff. She's a really great artist. Once I get a she's job, a... I'm going to look into commissioning her to do a profile picture for me. Yeah, and she's, she's pretty cheap fantastic. too. fantastic. For sure. Yeah, and uh, that Larry uh, and Larry from that Larry show is fucking really good. I- I'm going to go ahead and check those ones out because uh, I'm a big, big fan of his, man. I and, uh, like I-, I guess I should start like uh, this squeaky wheel needs to get some grease, and I need to get more of these other podcasters on because I really want to talk to Larry and I want to <laughs> talk to uh, a few other ones. Like I want Rem on my stuff too because I think those would be like really great episodes. So I'll probably end up having to do that. But the oh, you know, CJ, I'm now that you've gotten now that you've gotten Larry on, you got to get the other two Chad dads on Nick Ricada and Nick Ricada's and, friend, uh, who's also a dad, Tab Bird, I think. No, that's, no, that's no, Matt no. Cooks. I got names Matt up. Cooks. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I got names mixed up. But Mo, if you wanna, um, if you want Ram on your show, I can just mention it to him. I'm actually gonna have him on. Holy Rollers this upcoming week, and then I may do an appearance on his show if there's time. I'm not sure where our schedules are at, but all right, good deal, good deal. We'll have to, we'll, we'll definitely like uh, talk it out and see what we're going to go do with all that stuff. Because uh, Mo's um, got uh, not Mo, CJ's got a long line of good guests coming on the show. Oh, dude, like straight up, man, like uh, uh the Cripple Cast uh usually had a bunch of really interesting guests or like something on. Like uh, I think the 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 last one I did with him was uh it was me, Birdseed, and him, of course, because it's not like the Cripple Cast without Cripple Jesus, um. Uh, it was the one right before you were supposed to interview uh, John McAfee. Well, yeah, that's that's the last one we went out on, and I I think that there's no better way to go out on a podcast than John fucking McAfee. And yeah, McAfee's was, the fucking man. Yeah, it was it was amazing to talk to him. He's a he's a billionaire tycoon, but you wouldn't know it. He's a humble guy. Uh, it was it was really crazy, man. He reminds Wait, me of so CJ. If you didn't know that the cripple cast went down, who was managing the cripple cast feed? So I, this is part of why I'm hard to work with. Right? I'm I'm gonna say this. I can <laughs> criticize myself. I'm basically a retard when it comes to <laughs> technology. Okay, like I, I'm technically illiterate, pretty much. So when Had at the time, my co-host, he came to me and said, man, you should really do a podcast about being crippled. And I was like, all right, but uh, I only do the podcast under the condition that I do not have to do any of the technical work. And that's basically, (laughs) that's the arrangement we worked out. So 
I, I honestly don't know what happened to the feed after I quit the show. But I'll have to talk to Had and Bird because I still, I still talk to all the degenerates that people don't like because they're just cool to talk to. <laughs> Oh well, yeah, uh, like I like I said, Riley, you might want to give vagina a try <laughs> <laughs> this podcast. instead yeah. of hanging out with Cameron Clark and Birdseed. Perhaps uh, I now, think it's a better use of time, person. <laughs> yeah. you know? Now, now, once you finally get the chick to spread her legs, what you don't do is throw a pokeball at her clit, okay? <laughs> It's it's not gonna it's not gonna bounce back and do the capture motion. It's just it's gonna bump off for her and she's gonna go, What the fuck are you doing? Or and she might be box into will it. Pop up that says this 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 Pokemon, don't be a thief. This Pokemon is already owned by somebody else. Oh my god. You know, like the first time I played Pokemon a couple of weeks ago, like I didn't know that you couldn't steal Pokemon from other Pokemon trainers. And so I was like, dude, no, fuck you. I want your good Pokemon. Ta-ta! And the deal was just bitch slap my freaking Pokeball. God, I need some. Po- God, I need to get laid so bad. Jesus Christ. I'm talking about fucking Pokemon here. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, you can actually use Pokemon to help you get you laid, I'm sure. When she tries to put a condom on you, you just say, no, I, I got to catch them all. I want herpes. I haven't had crabs yet. I ain't got crabs yet. But uh I mean hey, some girls like Pokemon. There was some like cam girl who was on one of Asterios's really old podcasts whose name was like Pikachu or something. So some girls like Pokemon. Man, see, I know a lot of chicks that are into Pokemon. It's and not all of them ladies, if you the like the one or two of you who are listening to the show. Uh it's just that sometimes I kind of think like chicks who are into Pokemon are a little weird because like I know a lot of chicks that are into Pokemon. I think people who are into Pokemon are a little weird, no? <laughs> well, I don't know. Like, I, well, I, I knew female. one. I knew one and she was fatter than God and she had pink hair. <laughs> so that was, that was kind of my cue to stay away from the Pokemon crowd, but. I mean, there's a girl on my Pokemon podcast, but I've never seen a picture of her, so I don't know. I, I couldn't tell you. Uh, well, I could just be sure, a bastard. Make sure she, make sure she gets the good angle. You're gonna want to get all the chins in on that picture. <laughs> 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 I'm sorry, Penguin. I'm sorry. Oh my god! Imagine if you did catch like some like weird fat goth chick. And you're like you're ready to battle someone, and they're like, "I choose you, Charizard," and then here you are, "I choose you, Vanessa," and it's just this fat <laughs> fucking bitch who with with a nice nail shirt on, who's like, "I'm water type, Squirtle," and just fucking just pisses or comes all over the fucking. Yeah, I'm making a really disgusting joke. I really don't want to have to say it out loud because it's. Just you know, let the theater of the mind play out a little bit is what I'm yeah, saying. Yeah, just here. let the let your imagination fill in the rest. Yeah, well, let, let it flow. I, I didn't think fat bitches come. I just thought mayonnaise comes out of there. <laughs> <laughs> Straight up yogurt, great Greek yogurt, just. <laughs> <laughs> it's remarkably if it's super Natural effective. Natural fresh Greek yogurt, straight from the vagina. <laughs> That oh, woman by dis- now. Disgusting, disgusting. <laughs> All right. We're coming up on the outer here. Let's get the final thoughts here. And so. Uh, ugh. Man, fucking A. Me- Bless man, you. Me- Mexican food, man. It gets you. It- it's good going down, but you can feel it coming up. <laughs> it ain't good coming up. All right. So, uh, what are your final thoughts, uh, CJ? Man, you got anything else you want to add to the show? Yeah, I'm just going to say. Uh, Listen to Holy Rollers, uh, fuck the government, and all the men out there, uh, stop playing Pokemon. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, where can they find you at, buddy? Uh, I'm on, you can just Google Holy Rollers, like I said, we're on a bunch of platforms. Uh, my Twitter is Crippled Jesus, I'm mostly active on there. And uh, if you listen to the kill stream, I've been going on that show pretty heavily lately. So you yeah, you really have. Yeah, and the calls and the, the calls have been really, really good. I've been laughing my ass off at your shit. 
Uh, what about? Oh, I, I appreciate that, man. Oh, definitely. So, uh, Riley, what are your final thoughts? Slash, where can they find you? Final thoughts: Protests are good. Open the world. Just open it back up. Just, just open it. It's over. It's done. Bring us back. It's and like pretty much everything is done and over with. Yep. Just, just reopen it all. Send us back to work. Send us back to school. <laughs> Oh man, Which dude. they won't because they've I, already canceled it. Oh yeah, it's it's you're not going to see school till probably next year, unfortunately, man. I'm not going to see school till ever again because I'm senior year. Oh yeah, so like you you got out kind of preemptively, like well, like a uh, 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 not preemptively, uh, sort of uh, unintentionally uh, out of the blues. You know, you didn't expect it. You know, I feel bad for y'all, man, because like even though, like. It really the graduation process is super overrated what you're doing is like you 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 spend half the morning uh doing the uh doing the practice run and then you do the thing at the end of it and that's the big graduation they they hand you a sheepskin or whatever the fuck they print them on for nowadays and boom that's it my graduation was really odd, man. Uh, I remember it being super fucking hot in that day. And uh, this is a little uh, insight on being a cripple. Being a cripple, I have to piss in a bottle, right? It's called a yo. And at that time, I had to piss really bad. And I ended up spilling, like, the whole pee out of the... It spilled out of the bottle. And on my graduation gown, so I had to trash the gown right after graduation. But on top of that whole thing, my uh, superintendent, who was just horrible, she's still running the school to this day, I think. She, But ever since she came to the district, there's been like three cases of pedophilia, and we were fine before, so... Um, yeah, that's, that's fucking nuts, man. Like, you've told the story before. Well, yeah, yeah. Uh, we were I'm in a relatively safe neighborhood. There's a bunch of old Polish people that live there. And uh, as soon as she got there, it was just fucking off the rails crazy. Teacher's fucking kids. Yeah, oh, my God. Mo, can we... Mo, could we do a whole podcast episode just about teacher pedophile stories? Because I think all three of us have them. Like me, you, and Robin probably have a couple. Well, I, I, I that's don't, the crazy world we live in. I don't <laughs> have any teacher pedo stories, but I definitely have some creeper freaking stories. So I could probably give you that. Yeah. That, that oh, I could come problem. on that just one, do a man. Pedophile episode. <laughs> Definitely, I can definitely. come on that one, man. I uh, I gotta do the of the story, my English teacher. But uh, yeah, <laughs> I I had to listen to I had to listen to that superintendent give a speech about the guy that made Charlie Brown. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and like how oh maybe you can make uh uh maybe you can make uh. A shitty comic too. What what's he <laughs> you go on? Like I, I didn't really get the lesson of that at all. And then my uh my um my school band played Star Wars, which was just as gay as Star Wars itself. Oh but, man, you you want to know the gayest shit? And I'll I'll let you know. For my freaking uh, senior song, a uh, graduation song, we had "Time of Your Life," uh, by Green Day. Because it was like only a couple of years, but uh, like I think it was like 97, 98 when it came out. And so it would have been such a big deal if the teachers and the people who were running the, the graduation ceremony process didn't have to leave for an impromptu teacher meeting. And they left us standing at the entrance to the auditorium. Now, here's the thing. That wouldn't be such a big deal in and of itself. But they left time of your life on repeat uh, playing because they thought they were just going to be gone for a couple of minutes. And I had to listen to that fucking song for an hour and a half. So I, I, I hate Green Day and I hate that song. So that, that's my graduation you, uh, song. You guys at least had a song. My, uh, my school was ran by a bunch of dumb white girls. So we had the song from Friends. Oh, buddy, I'm so sorry. 
Oh, uh, that's I, brutal. I've never watched Friends, and everybody named Haley tells me it's great. So that's my I've watched a five-minute watch clip of Friends, and it was fine. Oh, <laughs> ow. Uh, dude, I, I, I think I watched like half an episode of Friends and I was just bored as shit and I hated it and I just never went back. And Well, that's one of those basic bitch shows. That, oh, like, big time, big time. Bro- broads on Tinder with no personality. They either watch Friends or The Office. So. I, I mean, I am a sucker for like 90s shitty sitcoms like fucking me Full too. House and Boy Meets World. Well, so yeah, yeah, like me Friends. too. And I, I wouldn't watch that shit, but anymore. But like, I still, I still appreciate them for what they were. But uh, the the thing that I hate is, I hate how The Office has become so. Well, it's we it's not did, the however, office. we did have one and a half votes for fuck the police. Oh, so, see, there uh, you go, there you go. That that did give me hope. There's at least two people in the school that have some sense. Oh man, yeah, like a. Uh, I hate how The Office, uh, fucking turned into like this, uh, this normie show. And it used to not be a normie show. It's just that uh, it got popular as I time went on. I was into The Office before it was cool. Well, I mean, I kind of hate to say that, but I was. I I really was. Like I was still there at the. I got into it at the height of the show because, like, this is when, uh. This is when Winamp was super, super popular, and Winamp had had a ton of open streams. So, like, I would just watch uh, House MD and The Office for instead of going to look for a fucking job for like House hours on pretty, it. It was great. House is pretty good, but uh, I always hated The Office, not just because of the basic bitch thing, mm-hmm. but because of, it basically elevated Steve Carell. And I never thought he was funny. I think Steve Carell is really, really funny. I I, I know a lot of people shit on me for <laughs> that, but I, I never thought he was funny. Uh, all right, I'm boiling up here. Uh, Riley, uh, where can they find you at, buddy? They can find me on Twitter, at Riley Tweets. You can find me on Twitch at twitch.tv slash Riley Streams. I got a few podcasts. Pixels, Polygons, and Fun, wherever podcasts are found. It's about video games. Pokemon Variety Hour on Stitcher, Spotify, or Apple Podcasts, in which you can hear 60-plus hours of me talking about Pokemon throughout the 60 episodes there's been so far. <laughs> nice, nice, nice. And that's always good to have like a plethora of like Pokemon uh, uh, knowledge and, you know, encyclopedic knowledge, you know? <laughs> yep. Then there's the Riley Podcast Mega Feed, where you can hear shows such as Largest Issue in the Galaxy, the Riley and Ian Movie Review Podcast, and most recently, the newly rebooted The Dickheads Podcast, the Dick Masterson Approved Edition. Uh, so, yeah, uh, that, well, you can, um, I, I also add, you can find me when the world opens up at the Landing Strip in Detroit. Oh, is that, will, is that Strip Club? I, yeah, that's the club right by the airport. <laughs> uh, right by the metro airport. If you see a crippled guy with a mega hat and two black chicks on his lap, chances are it's me. Oh, nice, nice, nice. I'll have to if I ever get to freaking Michigan, I'm looking you up, bro. All right. Oh yeah, yeah. And uh, then... Cameron Clark already put my address out there, so if anybody <laughs> wants to party. If you want to come on over to CJ's house and have a party, just go to Cameron Clark's SoundCloud and find the address. It's like an Easter egg hunt. But anyway. But, uh, yeah, go it's ahead. been great doing the show with you guys. Um, I'm probably going to eat some dinner here in a second. But, uh, yeah, it's been great to do the show. Good catching up with you, Mo. And Riley, I hope you do get vagina. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you for the vote of confidence, CJ. I appreciate it. Uh, 
this is a great show. I, I know I'm a pompous asshole because I'm doing the outro for your show. But <laughs> I know I haven't like told anyone where they can find me yet, and I haven't hawked, I haven't like hawked the Patreon. I haven't done anything. <laughs> Uh, don't donate to Mo's Patreon. Donate to patreon.com slash Riley so I can pay for Disney+. Plus. Okay, so fuck him. No, you go freaking go to patreon.com forward slash Mosai Productions, and that gives us all money. And, and, Riley, you bitch. <laughs> anyway, will you buy Disney Plus with that money and then let me use it? I am never going to. I will never give Disney any money willingly. I swear. All right. So then, so then, give it to me. Give it to me so I can get Disney Plus. Donate. Donate to the MoCast so Riley can stop talking about Pokemon. And you can <laughs> I mean, right. I guess if the MoCast makes enough money, I'll drop the Pokemon podcast and just do the MoCast full time. So yeah, if you want me to stop talking about Pokemon. Donate to the MoCast. Yeah, if you want to see Vagina in Riley's future, you go ahead and go to <laughs> patreon.com forward slash Mosai Productions, where, you know, we can help this young man find a future that has Vagina actually into it. Oh, so, yeah, use that one third of the Mo, Mo Diggity Patreon money to go <laughs> to a strip club. <laughs> mm, 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 mm. Shit, man, I'll put my half into that, man. We'll like, you'll we'll, be good, you'll be good. Anyway. Oh, if you ever need uh, free lap dances, just take your nearest crippled guy. You'll for sure get him. Oh, dude, I, I bet, I bet. I, I tend to take it full advantage of that if and when I come to see you in freaking in Detroit or Michigan. Uh, I, I guess you live near or around Detroit. I don't need to specifically know, but uh, like right well, around the yeah, area. We live in a suburb, but I go to uh, I go to college um, in a city. So the it's about like 40 minutes from Detroit. I'm mostly at the college dorm most of the year. I'm back in with uh i'm back in my childhood house for now because i didn't register any summer classes but hopefully i'll be at the college full time no all right all right i know i know so many people that live in michigan i need to just like go to michigan for a week and go to a different house every day and just hang out with a bunch of people yeah that's uh you could probably just party with a bunch of people i know my whole block is basically getting drunk because of this quarantine so oh i bet man i bet like alcohol consumption is must must have gone up some several hundreds <coughs> percent of, of percentage points uh I, I get been, somebody to I've break the law and throw so, me a bottle or two i've been drinking so much i can't even move my legs so damn it Man, I, I like I don't I don't want you to be resigned to a life in a wheelchair. We gotta get your legs working again. Gotta yeah, get you, yeah. Gotta get you up and running, so to speak. Oh man, that was the secret I... the whole time. All we need to do is get CJ to quit drinking, and he'll be able to walk. Yeah, I mean, maybe if I uh, shack up with Hillary Clinton and I find some baby fetuses to munch on, maybe I'll be able to walk again. You be like uh, Christopher Reeves. Absorb their souls. You be like Christopher Reeves. <laughs> Give you, you can, strength. You be like Christopher Reeves. You can break their like the back of their necks open and suck the stem cells out of them. Like just yeah. suck it, suck it like a freaking high C punch freaking pack. Anyway, you can find me at uh, twitter.com for slash happy good boy for twenty. Uh, most uh, 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 mo diggity forty two on uh, on YouTube. And Instagram, you can support uh, support the show directly at patreon.com forward slash Mosai Productions. And I'm sure there's an Amazon affiliate link in there somewhere. And uh, what, Something about a fade grips. So something about fade <laughs> grips. You can go to fadegrips.store, put promo code Modiggity in to the promo code box, and you save 15% off your total purchase. And uh, yeah, that, that's pretty much it. Join us next week when maybe I talk for more than ten minutes of the hour and a half podcast. Well, you did really well. I thought, uh, you, you know, you you put you getting in there was really good. It felt uh, like I didn't do that me. great, but maybe. <clears throat> thanks for having me on the show, boys, and uh, I hope all the it was a good time. listeners 
All your listeners, all the most sexuals, I hope they enjoyed <laughs> this hour and a half. I never thought about the name for my fan base. The mo like the oh, most sexuals is a good one, Mo. You should keep it. Yeah, I, I guess so because it's not derivative of anything else that I can think of, and I don't think it's offensive at all. So you know, I think no. we'll be keeping that because it's better than moheads. But anyway. Thanks a lot, for everyone, for coming out. I really appreciate you listening, and until next time, ta-ta. We're in the same